Can you hear that? Did you guys hear that? Right now, there are thousands of agents on their phone making deals. Right now, beyond these walls, there are thousands of people looking for housing. Right now, buildings are being built, bulldozed, and rebuilt. Beijing Huanying Ni. Welcome to Beijing. When I first came to China six years ago as a sculptor, I wanted to use my art as my means for communication. I used a pen as my voice. I went through sketches and different art periodicals trying to get my points across. I came here not speaking one word of Chinese. And now, six years later, I stand next to my best friend, my inspiration, my business partner, my sister. In 2008, we created Chart Contemporary, a curatorial lab with the overarching goal of bringing together art and people. People. People are constantly asking me, why? Why would sisters born and raised in downtown Manhattan, why would you even think to relocate to China? For me, my love affair, an ongoing love affair with China and Chinese contemporary art began in 1998 as a student of Mandarin. It's been a decade, more than a decade, and as we stand here with you, we never could have imagined that we would be here together, developing our creative partnerships, nurturing our creativity, and doing what we love. No matter how good our Mandarin gets, and no matter the challenges, we keep going bringing together art and people. Today, we invite you into our open house. Open house was developed in 2009 as a curatorial experiment, a labor of love. It was our response to what was going on in the art world during an, during an economic crisis where everyone was in a frenzy. Suddenly, people were no longer going to be parties. It was a time for no longer going to be Artists went back into the studio, and we had a chance to think about how art and people had a chance to think about this. How art, people, and space coexists. Simultaneously, our landlord did give us the boot, and he told us that we needed to find a new home. And at this point, we wanted to find a home that we could really call our own. A home where we could hide when we were having those not-so-good China days. We know you guys have all had those not-so-good China days. But then also a home where we could entertain when we were having those, wow, our life is pretty amazing China days. So we were faced with a forced relocation and we hit the streets. We started looking for a new home. A cultural anthropologist. And an artist. We decided that we had to go into the community and dig deeper. We became fascinated with the communities that we found. We became curious about how people were living. What we decided was that as we were doing this research, we noticed that people on the streets, people on TV, people like yourselves, some that we know and some that we don't, everybody was talking about China's future. Rather than think about the present, rather than look inward, everyone seemed to be focused on the past or focused on what was to come. We decided that we should 
undergo a curatorial initiative that would bring together these two things. Open House started off with an artist coming from Wuhan, a graffiti artist who was inspired by what was going on in his city. We invited him to take part in our exhibition, and we described what open house meant. The rules are simple. We find a young artist coming from a second, third, or fourth tier city. We then find a middleman who can help us search for a space that's either for sale, for rent, or for demolition. We hold a one-day exhibition where on Sunday, the people are invited between 2 and 6 p.m. to come out and we open our doors to the public. Precursor to this installation that you see right here. It was a test because we didn't know if we could make it happen. As all of you know, when you go and sign a lease in Beijing, you've got to pretty much sign it for a year. We didn't know if we could find anyone who would agree to help us look for a space to rent for two days. We heard that there was this art collective in Beijing. We met with them. As China goes, everything came together. And we organized a test open house. We didn't know if anyone would come, and we didn't know if we could really pull it off. But the test worked out. And so it led us to the second open house. Open House Royal Pond. Open House Royal Pond was explained to the artist, and after long meetings, he at the end of every meeting, he always said, but where is the gallery? Little did he know that we were going to install his work in a partially demolished space surrounded by apartment buildings. For us, one of the biggest challenges was thinking about how could we enter this community. We never want to impose ourselves. We want to try to find a way to coexist. How could we? take these four white walls, which yes, the artists received four white walls, but they were roofless walls. They were walls that we rented from the family who lived next door. A father who drives a Nianbao Che, a wife who cooks every night, and her son. But what was what most rewarding about this experience was that what started out as the biggest challenge turned out to be the biggest reward. As you can see here is the space on the top, the original location, and then the artist came in and added his graffiti elements. And so it was about a week before our scheduled open house, when Casey and I were at our, our scheduled open house, when Casey and I were at our local manicurist, as we do every Friday afternoon, stressing out and talking about the fact that we needed a venue, when our manager, Xiao Xiao, said, I know a place. I know a lot of underground housing. I know a place that's 20 feet next door. So before you knew it, wet nails, Xiao Xiao in tow, we headed underground. We headed underground into a maze, an elaborate maze, where waitresses, bao ans, people looking for work, where students, people you know, people you never imagined, are living underground, creating their own reality. Chung Ke specified she needed one room, a room of one's own. We gave her a 10 square meter underground housing unit that she transformed from a dark and dismal space into a dreamland where she could find comfort and ease. During the installation, there was a knock on the door. And throughout the whole process, for some reason, when you're underground, there's this feeling of, um, I should be quiet. So we tended to whisper throughout the whole installation. And suddenly, there was a knock at the door. And when the door opened, the, the woman, basically the landlord, she came in. And the look on her face said it all. We were so afraid that she was going to tell us to get our butts out of there, but when she saw what we had done, what Chung Ke had done to this tiny room, she looked at the artist and she said, this is beautiful. 
She was amazed that we had taken the time, that the artist had taken the time to create such a warm and welcoming environment. This was really the most rewarding experience of that installation. Most recently, we worked with an artist named Huang Xiaoliang, where he created an open house living in oblivion. His work to date has been the most interactive as he used projections on the wall and encouraged the audience to get involved. One woman actually went home and got her shadow puppet and brought it back so that she too could play with the shadows. The most inspiring moment for me during the open houses is the installation process. Working closely with my sister, my partner, as well as the artist in a space that is for sale, for rent, or slated for demolition, inspires me. For me, the most rewarding part changes with every space, with every artist. But being able to find points of entry into local communities is something that we never imagined we would have access to. Open House has become a labor of love that has turned into an ongoing obsession. Bringing together art and people has challenged not only the artist and ourselves, but also you, the viewers, making you question what is an exhibition and what is an exhibition space. People ask us, why do you waste this time? Why do you put all this time and effort into a one-day moment in time? For us, it's a way to slow down. It's a way to reconsider the present. People say to us, when is the next open house? And when is this going to stop? When are you just going to call it quits? We'll stop when it's not fun anymore. We'll stop when it becomes too easy. We'll stop, because I handle the budgets, when it becomes too expensive. We'll stop when people start to live in the present. When people stop focusing and thinking only about the past. And the future. Thank you.